The fastest crash in MotoGP was at the speed of 274 kilometers an hour. And guess what? The rider Marc Marquez walks off with a concussion and no physical injuries. How is this possible? Riding gear has played an important role in protecting riders since the inception of the sport. Motorcycle racing started in the Isle of Man in the 1920s. The earliest riders were seen wearing nothing but woolen sweaters, boots and a flat cap. That could have probably worked with the ladies, but not for racing. The riders eventually moved to World War pilot uniforms that were two-piece leathers with a hard hat used as a helmet and pilot glasses. The turning point for riding gear came in the 1950s when a young racer by the name of Jeff Duke got the very first one-piece suit stitch. Not just that, he developed this further by having multiple layers in strategic parts. It is said that before he decided to stitch this one-piece suit, he experimented by taping the two pieces together. It was soon established that the suit was protective and also gave him aerodynamic advantage. By the 1970s, Top gear brands like Dainese and Alpine Stars were at the forefront of the development race. These manufacturers, along with top riders, started developing race suits and other gear with leather reinforced with other materials. These suits weighed between 10 and 13 kgs. Heavy enough, right? Varishin, the Suzuki Maestro from the 70s, along with Dainese, developed the first back protector. This was made out of using old helmet visors put together. While another rider by the name of Sante Mazzarello developed riding boots. Who is he? He's also the founder of Alpine Stars. Can you guess which year the first riding airbag was patented? 1976. That's right. The first airbag was patented in 1976 in Hungary, but only seen in a race suit in 1998. The likes of Mick Doohan, who dominated the 500cc sport, use the first iteration of the airbag. Let's take a look at the current day race suits. These suits are made of calf and kangaroo leather and have been treated with chemicals to be lightweight yet have high abrasion resistance. The arms on this suit are pre-curved to suit the rider's position when they are tucked in. The aerodynamic hump was introduced in the early 90s which is also now used as a space to store data equipment or a hydration pack. Elbow sliders are now seen on race suits after Mark Marquez's style of elbow down riding. The accordion stretch panels ensure the rider gets good mobility when moving on the motorcycle. Nobody can put a cost on life, but one can buy the best gear. What do these cost? A decent suit could cost anything upwards of 80,000. The suits you're looking at right now is around 1.5 lakhs. While you can't buy the exact prototypes the rider uses in MotoGP, you can buy a replica that's close enough. A Ducati GP22 suit should set you back by almost around 3 lakh rupees. Marc Marquez endured forces of around 23 Gs in the fastest crash. But wait, how do we know how many Gs he faced? A current MotoGP suit has sensors that calculate all this data and also make sure the airbag is inflated in time. The suit that Marc Marquez wears is customized as per his riding style, but also has various sensors like a gyrometer, a shoulder cam, a data logger, and an airbag. This suit weighs between 5 and 7 kgs with all the armor. The suit from the 70s and the 80s had a leather thickness of 2.5 mm and an abrasion time of 4 to 5 seconds, which in comparison to the current suit is 1.5 to 1.8 mm thickness and an impressive abrasion time of 8 seconds. The boots, on the other hand, have reinforced PU parts. These parts are super hard and offer the best impact protection. Development of riding gear is like a space race. The best one is always the next one. For example, the initial generation of the race suit airbag would take 12 milliseconds to fully inflate. In comparison to the time taken to inflate, the latest airbag is 5 milliseconds. To give you an idea of how fast that is, the blinking of an eye takes 20 milliseconds. The modern day gloves and boots use sophisticated materials like carbon fiber, Kevlar, titanium, and magnesium. In the high octane world of MotoGP, every millisecond and every millimeter counts. And as we've seen, gear plays an important role. So whether you're a racer, an enthusiast, or a fan, always remember, the race isn't just on track, it's in the labs and the workshops crafting tomorrow's gear. In the next episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the helmets these MotoGP riders wear. Till then, ride safe and see you in the next episode.